Welcome Capricorns, your in-depth monthly horoscope for April 2024 for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. I'm going to give you some standout details to look out for, but please stay with me. I will explore in much greater depth all the ins and outs particularly relevant to your site. Now, there's a big emphasis on your home, emotional and family sector this month. It begins with Mercury in this area along with the Sun, but Mercury does go retrograde on the first day. But we have Venus joining this area on the 5th. We have the Sun combining with the North Node on the same day. And of course, we have that glorious solar eclipse on the 8th in the Northern Hemisphere and the 9th in the South. And that's going to be almost exactly conjunct Chiron very very close only one minute apart so where you live how you feel about things your immediate environment your sensitivities your need for protectiveness is certainly a big part of the picture early in the month but as april develops a much more charismatic set of influences is set to unfold for you please stay with me for more but if you are new to my channel Thank you so much for joining us. This is very much a community. If you have any thoughts, please share them. I interact with each comment. If you're a returning visitor, thank you so much for your company. I much appreciate all your likes, comments, shares, and subscriptions. If you've yet to subscribe, I'm racing towards 120,000 subscribers. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. That means every time I drop a video, you will get an alert. And if you would like to ascend above this Zodiac broadcast and embrace the power of personal astrology, if you give me three pieces of your birth data of time and date and place, or if you don't know your time, date and place, I can produce for you your life roadmap report. This will give you searing insights into the patterns that have played out in your life so far, but also a much more intimate understanding of how to work with these energies more effectively going forwards. And in my special package of 30% off, you can also get your 12 month transit report. That's the moving planets in the sky interacting with that unique blueprint that only you were given when you were born. Please see the link below for more. So Capricorn, as you start this month, I'm sharing on the screen now the event chart for your sign. And you can see at nought degrees in your sign, uh, we also have just tucked inside of that the moon in the 12th house in the free-spirited Sagittarius. But the moon in the 12th house can be very much to do with feeling a need to withdraw a little bit. It certainly could see you quite sensitive at the very start of this month. But if we look at the position of Neptune, just down there almost on the 4th house cusp, very much to do with how you feel, the Moon and Neptune are in a square. Whatever you discuss this month, whatever you think about, the ideas you exchange, the uh, programs or TV shows that you tune into, the information that you download, it's going to have quite an effect upon you, but it can have an effect in a very psychological way. And that's the key aspect that takes you into this new month. But also you can see the midpoint in the sign of Aquarius is in the second house. The midpoint's the balance between the desire of the sun, which of course is very much about our inner energy, and the moon, which is very much about protectiveness. The balance of those two, and divided by two with the midpoint is in Aquarius. And that's in the second house, but that's squaring up to Uranus in house five. You could find yourself a little bit impetuous this month in terms of splashing out on things that might give you a sense of uplift. But understanding the motive behind that is going to be important too. But there is a big cluster of energy in the sign of Pisces beyond Neptune. And you can see that Venus is pretty close to Neptune, uh, but right by uh, Venus is the part of fortune. If you have conversations with people who are sincere, could be a neighbor, 
could be a sibling or you're sharing ideas that are inspirational. They could definitely uh, create a lot of interest from others. But broadly, the moon is squaring up with both the part of fortune and Venus too. So that unreality that the moon square with Neptune can create is something to be mindful of. How do you overcome that? Well, I think it's important to listen to your instincts if you do feel something doesn't seem quite right at a gut level then it is very important to tune into that now there's also a big cluster of energy down there in house four including the sun and the north node uh, chiron and also mercury and as i mentioned before mercury goes retrograde later on on the first day the fourth house, in a practical sense, is very much about our immediate environment. It's where we live. It can be how we feel about ourselves, our connection to our inner world, but also it's very much about our relationship to our parents, our children, our other family members. Most of all, the fourth house is a lot about protectiveness and shelter, security, whether it is in a physical or emotional dimension. So you can see that with the big emphasis on the fourth house, quite feeling, but the sensitivity of your communications, the part of fortune, Venus and Neptune squared up by the moon in the very psychological 12th house. Yes, you can have lots of chit chat, but it's really how you feel as you go into this month. But the other thing to tell you about, I did briefly mention that Uranus is in a square to the midpoint. But of course Uranus and Jupiter are going to meet for the first time in 14 years in a conjunction on the 21st of this month. And for you, that is in a very exciting area. So you do have an opportunity to develop your ideas at the start of this month, but with the planet, which is very much to do with the exchange of ideas, Mercury in retrograde, there could be some rethinking, not everything that you've had in your mind to do may go forwards in quite the way you expect but that might not necessarily be to your disadvantage ultimately but you have got that bright sparkly energy in house five that's going to come back to you later in the month now on the third of the month venus moves forwards and connects exactly with neptune so the most beautiful of aspects. If you are someone who enjoys the movies, photography, um, or uh, writing, or you're a musician, you could find yourself absolutely on top form by the third. But by the fifth, Venus, the planet of relating, but also of money, moves out of house three and into house four technically debilitated in Aries, but if you've wanted to get some things changed decoratively in your home, Venus is gonna give you a lot of thrust over the next few weeks. Venus also forges an alliance to Pluto in Aquarius for the first time in over 200 years. Pluto's in that part of your situation, pushing and provoking you to maybe think about your self-worth, your values and your money in a different way. And it's possible that with Venus moving into the fourth house, a much more psychological dimension can start to develop in terms of your self-worth. So if you have been someone who's worked extremely hard and been very careful with resources, you could start to think now about relationships in a new way, even your relationship with yourself. But on the 8th in the Northern Hemisphere and the 9th down south, we have that total solar eclipse. But it's just one minute away from Chiron in the 4th house. Now where Chiron is in your natal chart may be different to the 4th house, nor may it be in Aries. It does actually spend more time in Pisces and Aries than any other zodiac sign. It can spend as little as a year in Virgo or Libra. So a lot of people do have Chiron in Aries. But what I would say in terms of the collective of Capricorn people, whether from an ascendant viewpoint, the sun or the moon, this is an opportunity to really revisit the whole concept of where we get emotional nourishment from. 
And if you're somebody who is very supportive to others, you know, you've always got time to listen to other people's issues, but when it comes to your stuff, that seems to not get the same amount of support, then this is a really important solar eclipse. It's gonna provide a backdrop of energy for the next six months, but if you feel that you're never really taken seriously around the things that are delicate for you, this can be something that you're really going to want to see happen over this next half year. Now, Mercury continues to retreat, so it's possible that some arrangements, maybe to do with meeting up or connecting with your family members, may be rejigged. Or if you've got contractors in who are doing some uh, changes to your property, particularly with Venus in the fourth house, uh, decorative changes is entirely possible. You may find that someone is somewhat unreliable. But from the 10th through to the 13th, the retreat in Mercury meets the advance in the Sun. They're exact on the 11th. We have a Kazemi. It's an inferior conjunction because Mercury is this side of the Sun in between the Earth. What happens is Mercury sits, as we see it, in the heart of the Sun, and the Sun amplifies Mercury's qualities. But Mercury in the fourth house is very akin to Mercury in Cancer. The emotionality, even though the host is the fiery Aries, the fourth house for you, the emotionality can in some ways blur the rationality that Mercury likes. But this is a, an opportunity to use the drive of the sun to cut through. You know, if you are feeling a bit defensive or oversensitive or a bit prickly, you can start, certainly start to think about that on the 13th as Mercury applies to Chiron itself. From the 14th to the 19th, a magical link between Venus and Mercury. If you do work from home and it hasn't been completely set up in the way that makes it easy for you, you may adapt your space, redecorate it, give you a bit more privacy from the other domestic activities. Then again, it could just be that in a business that you work in, away from home, you can just create your own space in, in, in a more pleasing and productive way. If you have ideas to provide services locally, uh, perhaps working on a part-time basis around childcare or another job, that combination between Mercury and Venus is, can be very, very lucky. Now Venus does go on to apply in a beautiful way to the node on the 17th and Chiron on the 21st. If you give to situations your compassion, your personal understanding, your ability to tune into situations in a more emotional way, that will be to your advantage. One of the challenges for you Capricorn is that your ruler is Saturn. Saturn is about being very traditional, it's about being very regular, can be about being very uh, pragmatic about going through the processes, but it can run a little on the cool side. Now, of course, it does depend what house your son's in. If it's in house five, you could be a very bubbly and warm character. It may be that your moon's in a very nurturing uh, sign or house. We can't take it just from the sun alone. But if you feel that there are ways in which you can evolve in terms of your emotional connections, being a bit more vulnerable, opening up to the right people, getting closer to people who can be very good for you. For example, if you've ever considered counselling, this would be a good month to have those sessions because the planets are all conspiring to give you a lot of encouragement to see greater insights that can come from being more emotionally available. But on the 19th, the sun moves into your sister, Earth sign of Taurus. Now, this is very exciting for you ordinarily because the fifth house sees you burst out of the more introspective fourth into the more playful and glamorous fifth. Your physical vitality can pick up and you can really dazzle people with the array of your talents and personality over the following month. What's not to like, particularly with Jupiter and Uranus about to come together in that alliance on the 21st. 
Well, it's just that as the sun makes its way into Taurus, it immediately comes into conflict with Pluto. Sun square Pluto is not an easy aspect in astrology. Because if you think about it, the fifth house for you is where you want to really strut your stuff. Whereas Pluto in the second house is asking you to very much be aware of your foundations and in some ways being risk averse with resources. The fifth house is the sector of chance. It's where we want to be pluckier, get stuck into life, just see where it may go. Now that's fine if, if you're someone who's a free spirit and you don't have a partner or children and you want to have a more playful part of the month, you can certainly have it in the last 10 days of April. But if you are thinking of splashing the cash, just reminding you at the start of this month, the midpoint in house two, resources was clashing with the more impulsive energies of Uranus house five. So it could be a bit of a desire to do that again, but if you are involved with someone, they may see it very differently and that could create some power battles. The 23rd sees a full moon in the sign of Scorpio, the most intense full moon of the whole year but actually for you a very sociable area, the 11th house, but it too is squaring up with Pluto. I think you're going to find towards the end of this month that you may be looking to refine and sift through some of your closest connections. All that fourth house energy earlier in the month may have given you some huge insights about who's really for you and who isn't. Partly because I feel that you're wanting not necessarily just the bright and bubbly connections. You want the ones where you can be truly, authentically yourself from a more personal perspective. And because although Mercury goes direct on the 24th, which is welcome, it does stay in its post-retrograde shadow through to the 13th of May. Pleasingly, Venus, the planet of love and loot, moves into one of its two ruling signs of Taurus on the 29th. Ordinarily, this would be amazing. It's a great time for you to give yourself a glamorous makeover. Some dates and invitations can certainly come your way as this month draws to a close. But once more, Pluto's been going to push you to evaluate the, the worth of whatever you do, whether it's socially, romantically, uh, playfully. If you do have children, you know, there could be a little bit of uh, resistance from them to some of the things you feel they should or should not be doing. By the end of the month, Mars has moved forwards. It does forge a very supporting angle to that Jupiter-Uranus conjunction on the 21st, but then it aligns to Neptune in the sign of Pisces the last few days of this month. That in itself could be a little challenging. If you are traveling anywhere, or you're thinking of buying a new mode of transport or some new tech, make sure you really analyze what you're being told carefully. When Mars and Neptune are interacting in astrology, we can get distortion because Mars is about desire and Neptune can be about unreality. So someone may seem to say all the right things, could be someone you really fancy, but are they going to really stack up for you? You're gonna find out soon enough, early in May. Because Mars moves into the sign of Aries, which is the sole domiciliary ruler of, and this is going to bring a lot of spark and extra fire into those home and emotional based issues. But I feel that towards the end of this month, Things can be more playful, but you may also become much more conscious of who doesn't really share your values. And I think a lot of the story for the rest of April could be quite surprising about the connections made, the thinking you have, the time you spent working things through, understanding some of the historical elements of your life, perhaps to do with... Uh, the experiences your parents had, you know, and your relationship to them and what molded them into being who they are and how they interacted with you. So some quite deep and very thoughtful stuff can unfold this month. But once Mercury goes direct, there's little doubt with the Sun, Jupiter, Uranus and then Venus all in your fifth house the chances are you're going to want to be so much more sociable and exuberant as this month draws to a close. But Pluto's just saying, 
just check that the value of what appears to be sparkly and fun really is a value that's worthy of you and your core values. It's been a real pleasure being with you, Capricorn. Thank you so much for joining me. I'd be honoured if you would like, comment, share or subscribe. 